You ever get the feeling that someone is trying to get your attention? That's a guy who wants to talk to you. Hey everybody, sorry for the delayed videos. I had a lot of preparation for this business trip. I'm in Dallas, Texas for potentially two weeks. A fun fact, the rest of this video was recorded over 24 hours ago, but a 17 and a half hour workday kept me from being able to touch it. Today's comment comes from Trevon Brown who commented on one of the DeMarvel videos and he has a whole grab bag of things he threw at the wall. He says he thinks I use indoctrination to debunk science, but first off, it was a D Marble debunk. He brought no science to the table. And secondly, to say what I brought was indoctrination is to categorize education in general as indoctrination, which is promoting ignorance like I've rarely seen this side of a Trump rally. So sue me, the man is a bore. He asks, what do I say about NASA admitting the moon is in Earth's atmosphere? Does that prove that they were lying before? Yeah, people keep bringing this up and my first reaction is, what, you believe NASA now? It's funny how when NASA announces something that Globe Deniers thinks works in their favor, NASA can be trusted. Funny how that works. Then I think about how science deniers like Trevon think that a new discovery means that what was said previously was a lie. How dare we claim to be extending our knowledge on a subject? You see, people like Mr. Brown here catch a soundbite or see a headline from an article like this one from NewsHour science writer Vicki Stein, and they don't bother going past the headline. Because if they did, they would read passages like, For more than half a century, even before the Apollo 11 mission captured the first ultraviolet images of Earth, researchers knew that the outermost atmospheric layer, the geocorona, extends far beyond the denser surface level air that we breathe. By the way, this is a photo of the Earth's geocorona taken with an ultraviolet telescopic camera from the surface of the moon. Or this passage where Vicky writes, although the existence of the geocrona was well known even in the early 1960s, experts at the time would have estimated that it ended well inside of the lunar orbit. But this newfound study found the geocrona extends more than 50 times the Earth's diameter away from the Earth's surface. In other words, the extension of the Earth's atmosphere was known about, just not how far it extended. This isn't lying. It's learning. You should try it sometime. Now, just for full disclosure, I use this casual tone when referring to Vicky's work because she's a personal friend of mine whom I've known since she was eight years old. And when I've spoken in the past of knowing people personally that have been boots on the ground in Antarctica, she's one of them. I'll take her info over a globe deniers any day. Anyway, back to the subject of the geocorona. Its extension to the moon is just further proof of what those of us on the side of science have been saying all along about the gradient nature of Earth's atmosphere. Certain science deniers like to repeat the claim that a pressurized system cannot exist next to a vacuum without a barrier because they insist on claiming that's what mainstream science says is going on. But there is no line where the pressurized system exists on one side and a vacuum on the other. And the discovery of the geochronos extension is just further proof of that fact. The vacuum of space is an arbitrary designation. There is no vacuum next to a pressurized system, only ever decreasing atmospheric pressure as one gets further away from the surface. So even at the distance of the moon, there are still hydrogen atoms lingering about. So the next time one of these repetitive nonsense peddlers asks about a pressurized system next to a vacuum, tell them to take their straw man position and shove it wherever they like, because you don't have to show evidence for something they made up. Okay, that's covered. Oh wait, he goes on to talk about the blue marble pictures, which I covered a few days ago. He says that hot spots would not exist with the sun 93 million miles away because all the light would be getting here at the same time. What? D do you think that hot spots occur because some light rays are getting to you faster than others? Is, is that a thing now? Anyway, he finishes with something about crepuscular rays, but I'm thoroughly bored with this one. 
Next, Walter Reed Jr. asks if my martial arts school has belt rankings and what belt do I have? Yes, the school I am a part of has belt rankings from white to black and a couple of special colors above black. Uh, the belts go from uh, white, dark green, light green, uh, light yellow, dark yellow, orange, bright red, maroon, light blue, dark blue, light brown, dark brown, black. I am currently dark blue. I don't really intend on going for black because this is an Indonesian school, uh, Persatuan Gerak Badan, and in order to test for black, uh, you have to go to Indonesia. Lastly, and honestly, this is my favorite, I had a couple people send me a screenshot of this from D Marble. Apparently, Daryl has mirrored a video about laser diffraction by, uh, from Dr. John D. And I guess uh, he feels that this is some sort of vindication of his laser test and a counter to the intellectual beatdown I gave him some months back. And then he sent out this tweet because he wanted me to see it. And I have to say that I think this is adorable. Daryl tries so hard to say, I never think about that guy. He's nothing. I don't even watch his videos. I don't care what he has to say, which is absolutely fine if it were true. But the truth comes out every time something comes up that he thinks really backs him up. Because then it's, I wonder what Greater Sapien thinks about this. This'll show Greater Sapien. And he makes sure someone gets it to me. And what this tells me is I've affected him. I'm like his personal science-based Jiminy Cricket, a little voice in his head making him wonder if his science is good enough. Now he's blinded to his worldview and incapable of changing his mind on the subject and he will never be able to do proper science until he is willing to change his mind. But until then, he's got my voice in his head. He's got a higher standard that he's trying to achieve and it's labeled Greater Sapien. Baby steps. Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory.